currency is. I'll also give you another tip. There's something called the NFP, the non-farm payroll. And the non-farm payroll is when the United States, on the first Friday of every month, announces how many jobs were created during the 30-day period. So during that day, on that Friday, the first Friday of that month, over a million traders trade the EUR/USD, And the NFP is known as one of the biggest market events in Forex. And it produces the most number of millionaires. So I will teach you as well in the Forex Millionaires Academy how to trade the NFP and how I personally trade the NFP and have been able to make millions using this strategy. So this is a powerful tip, guys. So you might want to also know what is a perp. You might have heard what is a, that people are talking about, this thing called the perp. A perp is what we call the ability for you to trade Forex using decimal points. So when you are seeing a, a price on EU or USD, you might see a buying price of 1.3000 and you might see a selling price of 1.3001. So a perp is the fourth unit after the decimal point, which is the smallest unit of an exchange rate. So if you say 1.3001, that means that one represents one perp. Are you with me? So if you said 1.3001, that means that's 3001 perps. So you don't count perps before the dot, before the decimal point. You count the perps after. And it's important to know how many perps or what a perp is because when you want to know how much profit you're going to make, you want you need to understand how many perps you are targeting to make. So you might be targeting a profit of 500 to uh, between 300 and 500 perps a week on your trading. So you need to understand the language of forex. Remember, we're learning the 20% now that you need in order to communicate and start trading to the advanced level when you join the Forex Millionaire Academy. So another thing that you need to know about is what we call the spread. So the spread is the, is the, is the difference between the sell quote and the buy quote in pips. And normally when you trade in Forex, you might notice that when you open a trade, the first thing that you're going to see is that your trade is going to open in a negative balance. And that negative balance usually represents the spread. And the spread is how much the broker charges you as a transaction fee in order for them to make a profit. So every time you open a trade, the broker will charge you a fee similar to whenever you withdraw money from the bank at the ATM. You will be charged a transactional fee for using your, your bank card in order to get the money in the form of cash. So remember that. So we learned about the perp and we learned about the spread. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So we get into the next big part of our presentation and this part is called market makers. And you might have heard of what a market maker is. Market makers are big institutions and big economies and political figures who affect the forex market. So what influences exchange rates is what we call the market makers. And who are the market makers? We can break it down to three categories. Number one are the central banks, which are the reserve banks, or the state economics, which is the performance of any economy, and the politics, which are the political figures and the political parties that are involved in making statements out there in order to affect the financial markets. So we'll start with central banks. So central banks, how they affect the market is through financial circulation. So by the printing of money, every month, governments like the, like the, like the, the US government, British government, the South African government, the Zimbabwean government, they print money in order to create a circulation of new money into the economy. And how much they print will affect the market in a certain way. So interest rate, whenever the governor of any country like uh, Mr. Tito Mbwene of South Africa, whenever he mentions there's an interest rate hike or an interest rate, interest rate stability or uh, uh, the same interest rate that are being announced. That affects the market in a certain way. Also, the mandatory reserve funds that the reserve bank keeps also affects the forex market. It can either make one currency pay to go up and another currency pay to go down. So, state economics. What are state economies? The GDP of a country, which is the gross domestic product, the performance, the money that is made in the process of people living and running businesses. That affects the country. So if the economic growth of the country is very weak, then that will have a negative impact on the country's currency. So the inflation, if the government again in, in increases the inflation, that can affect the currency of their country. It can affect the people living in that country and it, it, it can affect the currency at the end of the day. So the debt of the country, the amount of debt. So if the country that you're living in has been borrowing money from another country in order to develop the country or to create new money, then that country has a debt to that other country and that country has to now pay back that money. If it struggles to pay back that money, 
then that country that you're living in has a problem, and that problem will affect you and everyone else in the country, as well as the current currency of the country. So the amount of sales and exports and imports that the country does, that is part of state economics, that is part of the economic news, which is what I'm going to teach you later, of the country. So also the interest from the investors. So for instance, if people are not interested in investing in a country in the form of tourism or in the form of developing uh, new businesses, then the country's currency will be affected by that. So also, the third one we have is called politics. This means the stability of those governments. The stability of your government means that it affects the currency of the country. How? If you find Mr. Jacob Zuma and Mr. Julius Malema, who are political figures, fighting, in, fighting and arguing or physically having an altercation inside parliament and the whole world is watching, that has a negative, that has a negative, a very negative impact on the rank and that will have a positive impact on the dollar because people who are American who are investing in South Africa using the dollar, they will pull out their money from the country because they'll be like, we don't have confidence in the leaders of that country. So that affects the country's currency. So also, if a, 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 a minister makes public statements that the, the general public does not agree with or that foreign nations who are investing in a country don't agree with, that can have a, a negative effect to the market. That can have a negative effect to that economy and that currency. So if also there's a change in officials, so if, for instance, the president chooses a finance minister that people don't actually believe in, that will have a negative impact on the country. That will have a very negative. And if the, 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 the officials that are put into power are being suspect, suspected of corruption and running uh, their, their affairs, running their departments in an unscrupulous, malicious way, that makes the, the, the negative inclination of that country to rise and for people not to want to do business with that country. So now you've learned three parts of market makers. There are three kinds of market makers. We have central banks, state economics, and politics. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how it works. So we have an example here of the, the EU on USD and how the euro exchange rate, rate dropped during 2011 in November. You can even go into your charts and you can confirm this and see that the markets were, were negatively affected by this. So what happened was the Prime Minister of Greece announced a referendum, right? And when he announced the referendum, the market went from a high to a low. And we can see another statement here being made that the ECB announces a new president. At the moment that that president was announced, the market went up. So that means that the market was very happy with the announcing of that president. And we can see that as we went along November 2011, Berlusconi resigned, who is a public figure in Europe. And the market neg negatively reacted to that and dropped significantly up until it reached December 1st. And we can see on December 1st, the central banks agreed to stimulate the economy of the financial transaction. And that also increased the market slightly. But as time went along, the market went down up until the EU said it cannot agree upon the changes in the treaty. And that really, really affected the market badly and the market went all the way down. So, if you were trading forex, even though the euro was having a rough patch, you could have made a lot of money out of it. And I'm going to show you real quick how you could have made a lot of money. But before that, I want to teach you the golden tool of forex. And what do we call the golden tool of forex? The golden tool of forex is what we call the term leverage. Can everybody say leverage? Leverage. So, what is leverage? Leverage allows one to go through with deals involving amounts of money that exceed the amount originally invested. This is an amount or an opportunity to gain significant profit with even small changes in interest rates. So what does that mean? It means that you can use a small amount of money in Forex, but using leverage, you can increase your chances of making more money without decreasing your chances of losing. So in other words, you can only lose as much as you put into the market, but there's an unlimited amount of money that you can make. So that is one of the biggest secrets, which we call the golden tool of Forex. So, let me give you an example. When you create a new Forex account, they're going to ask you what leverage you want to use. You can use 1 is to 100, 1 is to 500, 1 is to 200, 1 is to 300, 1 is to 1000, depending on what the broker you're using offers. So let, let's, let's go deeper and understand what does that mean. So let's say you selected a leverage of 1 is to 100. That means you would have invested $1,000. If you invested $1,000 into your trading account, you would have the ability to trade with $100,000. And that is Wow, that is, that is unbelievable. 
No other business can provide you with so much liquidity and so much opportunity to make money. That's why in the beginning I said Forex is an unlimited, unlimited opportunity to make profit. So decide each point by which the exchange rate changes, it will be multiplied by a hundred in your favor. So which means that if you trade with a thousand dollars, you would have the potential to trade with a hundred thousand dollars and enjoy the profits thereof. So let's go deeper. The leverage effect. Naturally, this also works the other way around. In case of a loss, it also increases its amount. However, there is a solution for this, and that is called the stop loss problem. Okay? While using leverage, the profit potential is limitless. That's what I said to you. But the loss will never exceed the original investment, which means you can't lose more than what you have put in. The best platforms let you set up a stop loss order and automatically close the position once the exchange rate drops below the deposit. What does that mean? It means that you need to make sure that you have set a stop loss in order for you to start trading. Whenever you start trading, when you open a position, you are able to open a position and actually tell the market that if the market goes against me and goes in the negative, when it reaches this point, take me out of the market at a loss. Rather than me losing all my money, let me rather lose a small amount. That's because sometimes in Forex, you might expect the market to go in a particular direction, but the market decides to go in another direction. But because of the way I'm going to teach you how to trade, you will know exactly where the market is going to go in the left or in the right, up or down, bullish or bearish. So you need to understand one thing, that Forex is something that you need to master. And if you can practice, you can become really good at it. So leverage is a powerful thing. So let's go into an example, which I promised to give you which is showing you what happens when you trade the EU or USD based on the example that I showed you before. It's, the trade started from the uh, 1st of November 2011 all the way up to the first week of December 2011. So the following news came out on the 16th of September 2011. The world braces for the second wave of the crisis. Is that good news or bad news? That's definitely bad news. But remember, bad news does not really mean bad news for you. Bad news also means good news for you as a trader. Because you can take advantage of those bad news and trade against that economy. So, the following news, information about a repeated crisis situation in Europe appeared as early as September 2011. It was also already possible then to predict that the euro exchange should drop very soon. So as you can see, round about this date here where you see this blue dot, you, 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 let's say this was you, you decided to choose the transaction that you wanted to go in based on the news that you heard. And when you trade based on the news, it's what we call fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis is when you use economic news to determine the direction of the market. I will go deeper and give you an example of what I mean by that. So, when you're choosing the transaction, you decide to enter on the 1st of November when the market was still high, right? So you had these news come out and you already knew that the market will, will eventually come down, but you went in the market early and while the market was high, you decided to do a sell. So you open a, a transaction of one lot with an account with $1,380 and you decide to sell and you open that selling position with a leverage ratio of 1 is to 10 and you are at the exchange rate of 1.3800 euro to the dollar okay and then you let that trade run for a whole month you did a sell when the market was high and you decide to do a close when the market went down based on those news so now when you make the transaction a month later you decided to close it when the ratio, where the rate exchange rate was at 1.3108. So all the way from 1.3800, the market came all the way down to 1.3108. And if we calculate that, it's the rate difference is 692 pips in your favor. That means for every pip, you are able to multiply that by the lot, which is one multiplied by the leverage, which is 10, which means 